The Supreme Court unanimously allows all of the Home Secretary's appeals and dismisses Miss Begum's cross appeal. On 26th of February, the Supreme Court ruled that Shamima Begum won't be allowed to return to the UK to fight the stripping of her British citizenship. This decision leaves her stuck in a camp in northern Syria where thousands of women and children live in extremely difficult conditions. But who is Shamima and why is her case so significant? Shamima Begum was one of three East London girls who travelled to Syria in February 2015 to join the Islamic State. At the time she left, she was only 15. Shamima Begum was a child who was groomed and trafficked uh, and ended up in Syria where as a child she was married off to an ISIS fighter. She uh, had three babies, uh, all three of whom died. And when she was found in Proj camp in 2019, the British government had two options. The first being to recognize that she was a victim of child trafficking and to offer her the protection that uh, she deserves under the law. And the second being to to cast her out and to deprive her of her citizenship and not allow her back into the country. The UK government decided to pursue the second option. And that has deep implications in terms of the respect for the right to citizenship uh, in the UK and what it means in terms of the institutional citizenship for, for all British citizens. The then Home Secretary, Sajid Javid, revoked Begum's citizenship arguing that she has the right to Bangladeshi citizenship by virtue of her parents. However, the Bangladeshi authorities have said that this is not the case and she would face the death penalty if she comes into the country. This has left Chamima Begum with no nationality. So we are talking about Section 40 of the British Nationality Act, which gives power to the Home Secretary to strip a person of their citizenship. Now, this acts in a variety of different ways, depending on whether a person has another alternate nationality or not. So what this means is that if a person has an alternate citizenship, they will not be at risk of, citizen, uh, of statelessness in the same manner as a person who has no other citizenship other than their British citizenship. So if they are stripped, they will be left stateless. It's only someone who is as uh, a first or second generation migrant or has some link through migrancy who would have access to an alternate nationality of some sort, sometimes even inadvertently, but the link between them will be that they will have a migrancy connection, maybe even going back a couple of generations. And I think that is why this is quite disturbing because it simply makes you vulnerable to an additional state power and it's important to remember that Shamima Begum was born in the UK. So she's clearly the one where if the person doesn't have an alternate citizen and is only a British citizen, they cannot be rendered stateless. So the case now wholly turns on whether she has an alternate citizenship or not. So I fully expect that the Special Immigration Appeals Commission is going to decide on that very issue. Does she have Bangladeshi nationality or does she not have Bangladeshi nationality? Shamima Begum appealed the stripping of her citizenship and requested that she's allowed back into the UK to defend her case in person. However, the Home Office argued that allowing her to return to the country would create significant national security risks. In a final decision, the Supreme Court ruled that she should not be allowed back. Uh, what's deeply troubling about the, the, the judgment is that whatever your perspective or opinion may be on the lawfulness of the Home Secretary's actions to deprive Shamima Begum of her citizenship, the court has, in a sense, denied Shamima Begum the right to a fair trial to return to the UK in order to challenge that decision. And therefore, by virtue of denying her the right to return to the UK, it renders that decision arbitrary because she has no recourse to justice. Tamima Begum now remains in al Raj camp with no right to return to the UK, with no protection, or no consular diplomatic protection from the British government, and in conditions which have been deemed by the UN and indeed recognized by the British authorities as amounting to cruel, inhuman and degrading treatment. 
The case has now been paused until she can find a way to participate in it in an effective way. This has left her in the legal limbo. And she's not the only one. Hundreds of British and foreign nationals are currently stuck in camps in Syria, waiting to be able to return to their home countries. There are all kinds of people of British nationality and other foreign nationalities who are in Syria. Uh, they're all unable to go anywhere at the moment, and it is a conflict-ridden area. So I think there should be measures, especially because there are so many minors who are over there, including very young children, there should definitely be efforts to bring back those who are the most vulnerable in this situation. And then there should be evidence that not bringing back the others or taking such drastic steps is some way absolutely the most warranted action. Uh, so next steps should be definitely to bring back those who are the most vulnerable in the camps and make sure that they're not left in this kind of rightless uh, situation.